it again. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. That's five days. My work week is seven days a week. I don't know what I don't know what these five day work weeks are. Uh, no, 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 no. He said to me many years ago, this is true, like a year and a half ago, two years ago, he was my child. And, and he said that I said, well, I can't fight back because I'm worried about, you know, like, how can I fight back, you know? He said, no matter what you say to me, your grade is what you earn, right? He said, right. He said, of course, you can say, I mean, you know, I can you know. Right. And. <laughs> Oh, oh boy. English. I was a psychiatry major, so I said, Yeah, I'm done with all my nonsense classes. Oh boy. Oh, she gave me the look of evil and all that. No, no. no then you said, Well, don't, don't you know what this means? Well, well, you, uh, let me guess. If, if the programming doesn't work out, you're going to write like Dale Carnegie Part 2 How to Win Friends and Influence People. <laughs> Um, I was happy that no one asked me if I was like going skating on December 3rd or something, you know. But no, that would be gone for a lot longer than a week. So, all right. I looked at the, I wanted to go over the fragment example today, which was a contact list. But when I look at that, uh, I feared that that suffered from the same issue as Deedles. That is, it did too much. So we would lose the fragment part of it by all the other stuff going on. So I found a simpler example of fragments to go over. And um, the simple example, again, I got from this page, which I po post a link to. I didn't realize there was some confusion concerning where it was. But again, under here, I went to, under the developer.android.com training, and there is a whole bunch of nice things, apps with multimedia, graphics and animations, connectivity, and so on. So rather than going ahead to one of these and do the, which one was I doing? User, user and phone location, I thought would look at instead building a dynamic UI using fragments. All right. Again, the idea of a fragment is like this. A, a fragment is, you could consider it like a part of an activity. Uh, it doesn't look to be a bee. It, it looks like a fly of some kind. Really? Is anyone allergic to bees? Um, I am, but it's like, no, you know what those are? Those are those lady beetles. Okay. Okay. Um, a fragment is like a piece of an activity, a fragment of an activity. All right? And that gives your UI, that gives you the ability to develop UIs that are more flexible in a couple different ways. First of all, we saw a way last time, and we'll see in this example, the fact that with different screen sizes, we can piece together fragments in a different way. So in, in this particular example, we had, oops, All right, now where to go? Oh, Fragments Basic. Here's how this looks on a small screen. Very similar to what we did last time with the contacts. Insofar as 
we actually have a screen that has a list of news articles, Article 1, Article 2, and so on. When we click on it, when we click on one of these, it brings up the detail of the article. And then we can go back to the previous and click and get the other article. And that works nice because this has limited real estate to put stuff on. The same app running on a tablet will put both those fragments on the same screen. Like this. where we have, again, a list and the detail of the article. And when we click on that, we can go back and forth between the articles. And it happens all on one screen as opposed to happening on two screens. So there's two different fragments in both of these. And in one case, my UI is comprised of the two fragments side by side. In this case, where I have more real estate, in the case of the smaller screen, run one fragment displays, I make a selection, then I display the second fragment. All right. Now, that's sort of like the main advantage that they cite for that. Another thing is, is a fragment sort of becomes a nice little self-contained component that you could piece together on a variety of different pages. So, for example, I could have that same headline fragment on another, associated with another activity within my app. Yeah, modularization, exactly. It's, it's a little component. I could put that and I could incorporate that into a second activity. All right? So it gives you more flexibility and reusability and all those good things. All right? Let's look at the code that does that. First of all, we have four classes here. We have our main activity. We have an ipsum activity, which is sort of our fake article generator. All right, this would correspond to um, this would correspond to like if. Uh, you know, uh, a database that maybe would retrieve headlines from the database. But this doesn't actually do database interactivity. There's just some hard-coded articles in here. All right. So this one is sort of just a, a dummy one. They've named it after one of the parts of Greek text that's often used. The main activity is sort of the container that contains everything. We then have the headlines fragment, which is the list of headlines. And then we have the article fragment, which represents the details of a given article. All right. Let's look at the manifest file. Nothing in particular here that's interesting. So let's look at the layouts. And we have two different layouts, as you might imagine. We have a layout large, and we have just a plain layout. The layout large, again, remember, anything that comes after the folder name, anything that comes after the dash after the folder name, is called a resource qualifier. So, if the, if the, if the screen size has been determined to be large, this is the UI that's going to be used, this XML file. If this one, if it's not large, then you get this one. Two XML files with the same, same name. The difference is, is that one is in one file, one is in one folder, one is in the other. 
What's the difference between the folder? The difference between the folder is the resource qualifier. So those two files are exactly the same inside them? No, not inside them. Okay. We're going to look to see the difference inside of them. The difference inside of them is, as you might imagine, the regular layout is going to have less stuff in it than the big layout. Right? The big layout has a place for two fragments. All right, it's a linear layout, and it consists of two fragments. Fragment one, fragment two. Fragment one represents the list of headlines. Fragment two represents the details of the selected article. All right. If the screen's ever hard to read, let me know and I can like pop it into a text editor or something and make the font bigger. Um, the, the, this seems kind of washed out. Like I have a hard time even reading the L's in this. So if you do have questions, let me know. I can bring it up. Bottom line is this is in the resource qualifier of large, so this is what large screens get. And the nice thing is, is we don't have to code that, right? We don't have to know the criteria of what is a large screen. The Android framework makes that decision for us. Any more than we need to know, for example, um, what, uh, you know, uh, what language the device is set to. When we declare our strings file in different values folders of values.es, of values.fr, of values.de to represent different languages, then the framework is smart enough to know to pull the strings from the appropriate resource qualifier based on the language. So that's something we don't have to code for. All right. We don't have to code for the applying of the different UIs. Now, for sure, we're going to have to put some code in here to handle the two different situations, but we don't have to code to say some of the time use this file, some of the time use that file. Now, let's look at our layout that is for a small screen. This only has one thing in it. This has a frame layout. And we can kind of guess the purpose of it by looking at the ID we assign it. We assign it an ID of fragment container. So this is going to be a frame that we're going to hang or pop in different fragments. So in other words, when this application loads, and remember this is on the smaller screen, When, it, when this application loads, we get the one fragment, the fragment that's a list of the articles. When we click on an article and select it, we get the detail fragment that shows the detail of it. So really what's happening is within, <laughs> within that frame, a different... <laughs> Within that frame, a different activity is being popped in there. All right? A different, I'm sorry, not a different activity. A different fragment is being popped in there. All right? So the UI simply contains a frame. Articleview.xl, all right? Which simply consists of a text view. Why is there no layout large article view. Why is there only the one article view? The layout, large combines both of them. the layout large combines both of them, but the article section of the screen is going to be the same regardless. It's just, a, it's just a text view. So there's no difference between the article. There's no difference between the way an article looks as part of the multi-fragment view and 
as part of the single fragment view. All right? A article simply appears as an article. So there's really no need to define a different for a bigger screen. We could, in fact, later on if we play around, maybe we'll do that. Maybe we will make um, the text bigger, for example. Because, hey, it's a bigger bigger monitor or a bigger screen, you got you got a bigger um, you can have a bigger font. All right. In fact, let's do that now. Let me go and let me copy article view and I'll paste it in there. And I'll go here and I'll make the text size pardon me? 24. All right. So now let me run it and let me connect it to And now when I run it, I don't see a huge difference. Let's go really big. Don't see a difference. I was in the wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I did the actual opposite of what I wanted to do. I'd make the font bigger on a small screen. So now, oh boy, I don't even have to put that on the, put that on the uh, Elmo here. We can see that it's a lot bigger. All right. Again, those resource qualifiers, and there's a whole set of them, and they can relate to, we've seen three examples at least of resource qualifiers. That would, that would be a good quiz question, by the way. Um, I haven't enabled the quiz yet. It should be enabled sometime tomorrow. I'll make sure you have a week to complete it. But what are the three different resource qualifiers we've seen? We've seen it for screen density, namely this stuff. We've seen it for screen size, which is distinct from screen density. All right. And then finally, we've seen it for language, that we were able to go and create another uh, file for language. All right. So let's go look at the main activity. Main activity, first of all, is going to have to be smart enough to know if they're on the one pane or two pane views. All right? So, main activity worked as it did before, except it extends fragment activity. And it implements headlines frying, but on headline selected listener. We'll come back to that in a minute. All right? We'll come back to that in a minute. On create, we do like we've typically done. We set the content view to news article. Again, Android framework will decide which version of the news article XML it gets. All right, either it gets the regular or the large, depending on the screen size.
Now we look to see which layout we're using. And we look specifically for, we do find view by ID, r.id.fragmentcontainer. And we look to see if that is not null. All right. Let's let's pull this into a text editor. All right. And hopefully we can make it bigger. What is this line doing? Someone explain in, in English what it's doing. Just in, in English what it's doing. Okay. And why, okay, it's checking to see if that fragment container exists. Why wouldn't it exist? Exactly. Exactly. There are two layout XML files. And let's bring them up. And I'll also, I'll also bring these up. This is the big one. All right, that's what the layout looks like for the big, larger screens. There is nothing on there called fragment container. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking to see, we're trying to find in our content view, the thing called fragment container. If they are using the large layout, there is nothing in that layout that's called fragment container. And therefore, fragment container, when I say get view by ID, r dot blah 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 fragment container, is going to return a null. Let's look at the smaller layout file. Pardon me? Exactly. The smaller layout file. Took me a second. It's late. That's not fair. You're dealing with someone that's, that's tired. Yeah. So, in this case, there is something called fragment container. So, therefore, that function, find view by ID, r.id.fragmentcontainer, will not be null. Okay? So this check in English is checking to see which layout that we have. Which layout does this app have at this moment? Two choices are the layout with two fragments on it or the layout with one fragment. How do I know it's a layout with one fragment on it. The layout with one fragment has a view called fragment container on it. So if you can find that, that means that we are on the layout with one fragment. If not, we're on the layout with two fragments. So, let's see what we do here. We create an instance of the headlines fragment. We pass it in case there was anything to pass to it. And we go in and we add to the fragment manager the first fragment. What does that mean to add to the fragment manager the first fragment? We effectively put that first fragment 
the headline fragment in the fragment container. All right. So our headline fragment, the fragment that contains the list of headlines, gets put in the fragment container. That's effectively what this does. So now, our screen has in it, if it's a small screen, it has in it the headline, act, the headline fragment activity. If it's a big screen, it has both of them in there. All right? Now, let's see what happens next. We're going to ignore that for now. Let's look at the headline frame activity, headlines fragment, rather, and article fragment. The headlines fragment is a list fragment. We've seen list activities before, right? Um, the address book was a list activity. Well, this is a list fragment. Now, We'll leave this for a minute again, all right? This relates to the other thing that we were going to leave for a, for a few minutes. This is where we're creating an interface called on headline selected listener. We're going to look at the on create. The on create goes in, it does a little bit of management for different versions of Android. And it sets the list uh, adapter. In other words, the list adapter is the data that goes with the list from essentially the Ipsum class, their headlines array. This Ipsum class really doesn't have anything in it other than two string arrays, one that contains headlines and one that contains articles. <coughs> So what this does, this headlines fragment, is it says, I'm going to create an adapter for my list. What does that mean? Think of that if you've done ASP.NET, as that's like the data source. All right, SQL data source. This is the data that's going to be associated with that list. And we're pulling it from the headlines array in Ipsum. And we are, again, we put that in and set the list adapter to that. So that makes that list show a list of all of the headlines. This happens regardless. All right. This happens regardless of whether you're talking about this fragment living on the two pane screen or the one pane screen, right? Because either case, as soon as we go into this, we get a list of the headlines. They do some other initialization. Now, we're ready to discuss the things that we said we were going to delay. All right? Remember back to the beginning of class when we were discussing this on a conceptual level. I said one of the advantages about these fragments is that they can be very modularized. So I could put this fragment in a bunch of different activities within my app. So I could put this headline in a bunch of activities. All right? 
Therefore, each activity that I put this fragment in has to be able to handle the clicking of a headline. Right? Because the clicking of a headline is going to trigger something to happen. All right? In this case, the something that's going to happen is we're going to display the text of the article in the article fragment. There could be other stuff, right? We could have an image that would show, we could have another headline, we could have another activity that contains this headline fra uh, fragment. When you click on it, it shows you a photograph from the article instead of the text of the article. Maybe on another page we had that. Or maybe on another page when you clicked it, it showed you the author of the article's information. All right? So every activity that contains this fragment might want to be able to deal with the clicking of a headline in a different way. Might want to do a different thing. All right? But one thing we know for sure. We know that the fragment can't handle the clicking itself. Right? Because the fragment, when we click on the fragment, we want something to probably happen in another fragment. So the fragment at least can't completely handle the clicking itself. And the second thing we know is that any activity that contains this fragment better need to know, better know, it needs to know, what to do when they click on a headline. All right. So do we agree on this? This fragment can be put on any number of different activities. Each of those activities better know, better have some code to handle what happens if we click that. Because otherwise, we don't know what's going to happen, right? And it could be that different activities handle the click in different manners. If we assign one activity, it could do one thing with the click. If it's on another activity, it could do another thing. So, what we do is I create an interface inside of this, this is an inner class, inside my headlines fragment, I create a class called on headline selected listener. And this has one method, a public interface called, oh I'm sorry, that was a public interface, it has one method, a public void, that is on article selected. So, Whatever activity this guy gets put on, that activity has to handle that. And the mechanism by which it handles that is we define an interface. Then in our main activity, we say that this main activity implements that interface. Because that implements that interface, that means that we have to define somewhere, right there, an on article selected method. If we don't define that, then we're going to get a compile error because we've said that this class implements that interface. That's a commitment to have this method in it. All right. So, on attach activity, what that means is when this fragment gets associated to an activity, gets attached to an activity, all right, we are going to set our M callback object and we are going to cast the activity as an on headline selected listener. All right. If we've done everything correctly and we've defined the interface and if I've set my activity to implement that interface, then this code will execute correctly because it will look at the activity that I'm trying to attach this fragment to and say, yes, this implements the on headline selected listener. 
So we're cool. If not, then we're going to get an exception. And we're going to display that exception saying it has to implement that. So in other words, if I went back to this activity and I forgot this, all right, when I try to attach this activity, or rather that fragment, to this activity, this line of code would fail because the activity that I'm attaching it to doesn't implement that interface and therefore it's going to blow up. We've talked briefly about interfaces. The idea of an interface is an interface is where you define a certain set of methods that any class that implements that interface has to have. Think of it as being like it creates like a little plug-in and it says if you want to plug in a class of this type here, it better do these things. And if not, then you're going to get an error. So in this case, we've defined that any activity to which we attach this fragment better be one of these interfaces which is another way of saying it better have this method defined on. And sure enough, we looked at it, it did. Let me go and paste that back or undo. Otherwise, I'm going to be surprised later on. There we go. All right. So, what happens when we click on the headline? When we click on the headline, we call back we tell the activity, the main activity, what to do. All right? So we're communicating between the two fragments. All right? In one case, we're going to put the activity up on, up in the frame. In the other case, we're simply going to reset the contents of the right side of the screen. Remember, I said that every activity that you attach this fragment to has to have that on article selected. That's how I know that this is not going to give me a compile error because we've defined that as being of that type. So what happens when we click on it? We call back in our main activity on article selected. What does on article selected do? It does one of two things. Either it simply fills in the right frame, the right fragment, or it creates a new activity and displays that. It, display, it creates a new fragment activity and displays that in the frame. So, if article frag is not equal to null, what does that mean in English? means we're in the large view. We're in the two-frame view because our view, our fragment that we're looking at, that's in the frame, contains the article fragment. Okay? And therefore, all we have to do is we have to call update the article view. And we'll look at that in a second. It's real straightforward. It just just essentially pulls from that ipsum array. Otherwise, we're in the mode that there is just the one fragment on our UI, just the list. So what do we do? We create a new fragment for the article. We pass a bunch of stuff 
to it, including the position. Remember, the update article view is going to use the position to pull the appropriate article. And then we go and we add that new fragment that we created to our fragment stack, to our stack of fragments. All right? When I say it adds it to the stack of fragments, what I mean is when I hit the back button, it takes the old fragment off and brings us back to our original fragment. So that fragment frame that's on the one pane view, different fragments get popped into that. And as we hit our back arrow, we take them off and go back, peel them back to the previous fragments. So we do, again, one of two things when we click on a headline. Either we tell the article pane, the article fragment, to go and refresh yourself, or we create a new fragment using the article fragment as the template and put it on our stack so that we can add that to our stack and so we can pull up the other fragment. The article fragment is, again, very, very simple code. Effectively, we inflate our layout, that article view. Again, which article view does it use? It's based on the resource qualifier, regular or large. And then, depending on how it's passed, it pulls which article it wants and calls the update article view, which goes to the Ipsum array and grabs the article and refreshes that text view that's associated with the article. All right, key things of this. Number one, the use of the resource qualifier to differentiate between who gets what string, uh, who gets what screen, who gets, one, who gets what UI. We could easily extend this by having an extra large screen that maybe had three fragments to it. Maybe had the list of news articles, a, the article, and a, an image, for example and then would use a similar technique to go in and based on um, what was present, what was not present, we would go in and um, either create a new activity or we would um, populate the, um, uh, populate the, uh, the fragment uh, in place. So we set, again, our UI using the resource qualifiers. We create our two fragments which understand how to populate themselves. The one was a list view, the other was a text view and based on the position it pulls an element from the array. And the real trick here was connecting these. All right, connecting them so that when you clicked on the headline list it popped up the detail view, the article view, regardless of whether you're talking about the big view or the, the big UI or the little UI. It does that by, again, calling a callback function. As I said before, each activity that you put this fragment on has to know what to do when you click a headline. All right. This main activity is what knows or what can determine whether there are two fragments on the screen or only one and whether it needs to create a new fragment or simply change and fill in the right pane that contains the article. If that headline fragment was put in another UI, then the activity for that other UI would have to know what to do. And it might do something totally different because there might be other stuff involved with it. But it would have to know how to handle that. So it would have to implement that interface 
And by virtue of implementing that interface, it would have to have a method for on headline clicked. Question about this. I think when we look at, at this in this way, uh, abstracted from that bigger contacts problem that we were trying to look at last time, I think it's easier to see what's going on with contacts. Or I'm sorry, with, uh, with fragments. If you think about it then, you actually could create, for a tablet, have a little menu that allowed the user to choose what widgets they wanted to see. You know, you could have a, a news widget, a, a sports widget, a weather widget. And they could go and they could configure it to show what they wanted. And based on that, you'd create a new fragment and, and display it there. Questions about this? All right. The rest of the time, we can, we can work on our assignments. We have that database assignment due. Um, and um, I don't know. Did I? OK. Well, well, you know the next assignment is to go and do what you actually said you are going to do in the design. So that, that's a, if I did not explicitly say that, that's the next assignment. I will post that. I will also enable the quiz. Um, tonight or tomorrow. So you'll have a week from, if I do it tomorrow, you'll have until the end of day next Wednesday. All right, that's all I had.